श्री जयंत प्रसाद इजी है और इसके अलावा सब एनी वे डॉक्टर मेहता लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन गुड मॉर्निंग आई स्टिल बिफोर नून इट्स अ ग्रेट प्लेजर फॉर मी टू बी हेयर इन डेली आई एम अ फ्रीक्वेंट विजिटर हेयर एंड आई वॉज हेयर लास्ट ईयर एंड आई ऑल्सो हैड द प्लेजर ऑफ विजिटिंग आई डी एस ए and i like to thank idsa for providing me the opportunity to share my views on norms and the global war on terror challenges for asia i have kept my talk short and more clinical no country bashing uh with this broad subject i will limit my focus on what i consider the foundation for a regional counter terrorism strategy in practical terms this means we agree on a common counter terrorism template a template which will include important actionable points which i call a minimum denominator which will have four or five points in it my common denominator is naturally based on my personal counter terrorist experience within pakistan and i think it will hopefully also reflect views of my interlocutors whom i have been talking to over the years incidentally i have drawn inspiration for my presentation from the concept note prepared by the idsa for this concept It is surprising that despite this long ongoing global war on terror the world stands in ambiguity in defining what constitutes terror it is time that we at least at the regional level agree on a clear understanding of terrorism as we all know every nation has his own understanding of what defines terrorism is and is often influenced by its geopolitical reality the united states has defined terrorism under the federal criminal code as activities that involve violent uh, life threatening acts that are a violation of the criminal laws of the united states or of any state and appear to and intend to intimidate or coerce a civilian population to influence the policy of governments by intimidation or coercion or affect the conduct of a government by mass destruction assassination or kidnapping us army manual defines terrorism as the calculated use of unlawful violence or threat of unlawful violence to inculcate fear it is intended to curse coerce or intimidate governments or societies to attain political religious or ideological uh, goals uh, ladies and gentlemen although i have not defined terrorism i'm fearful uh, but in my opinion there are certain essential elements which i feel are what constitute terrorism one use of sudden violence against unsuspecting individuals or groups to strike fear and helplessness essentially in a civilian population one point second strike terror and fear through the use of unlawful force violence is there primary instrument the objective of the terrorist is to coerce groups of individuals and governments to follow their agenda a terrorist group usually has a political ideological or religious goal which he is unable to attain through legitimate means so fundamentally this is an illegitimate activity Uh, we all know terrorism has become a household uh, name but even the united nation has still not been able to define what is terrorism 
of all the forms of terrorism, terrorism conducted in the name of religion, I disagree with the last speaker, in the name of religion is the most common and vicious. Many times Pakistan has been blamed for supporting terrorism, which was done today also. On the other hand, Pakistan continues to suffer more than anybody else at the hands of foreign and domestic terrorists. Today terrorism is a serious global threat and needs to be defeated by a well considered strategy both at the national, regional and international levels. The terrorist attack in Mumbai carried out by a terrorist group based in Pakistan on 26 November 2008 is a classic trans-border terrorist event. I hate to admit this, but this is true. Unfortunately, mistrust overruled common sense. Incidentally, at that point in time, I was the National Security Advisor of Pakistan and would be happy to share my views on the Bombay episode during the question answer session. I had put forward certain suggestions which were not considered. There have been sporadic terrorist attacks in Pakistan over the last few decades, but the well organized and senseless terrorist attacks in Pakistan picked up post 9 11. This was essentially because of the infiltration of Taliban's, the Afghan Taliban from Afghanistan to Pakistan's tribal territories in the wake of the US-led bombing attacks in Afghanistan. The arriving Taliban killed over 90 tribal leaders known as Maliks and established their writ in Pakistan's tribal area based on coercion and terror. Besides the inflow of Taliban from Afghanistan, other contributory factors that fuel terrorism in Pakistan are poverty, a deficient education system, a weak and corrupt police, and a cumbersome legal system. This is in addition to the presence of strong politico-religious parties with very superficial interpretation of Islam. The Pakistan army has been battling the terrorists since 2004 in the tribal areas. We have suffered large-scale casualties both of innocent civilians, law enforcement personnel across Pakistan. According to one expert, the total number of casualties since 2003 have been approximately 81,000. A, mod a more modest estimate of the total casualties is 60,000. 50% of these casualties were civilian, 40% were terrorists, and the remaining security personnel. After the gruesome terrorist attack on a school in Pichar on the 16th of December 2014, which has been referred to by the previous speaker too, which killed 141 persons, mostly children. The, politically, the political leadership finally got together and agreed on a 20-point national action plan to defeat terrorism. I believe a lot of work has still to be done to make the national action plan a success. Besides the various actions spelled out in, the, in that plan, it will be very important for Pakistan to develop a counter narrative to the narrative of Islam being preached and followed by the Taliban and their supporters. Taliban both in Afghanistan and in Pakistan. Surprisingly, the Afghan and Pakistan government have difficulties talking with each other. The Taliban on the other hand are hand in glove. Uh, so there, there is a need for this counter narrative. At the regional level and beyond, besides a strategy, there is a need to develop 
a dedicated multinational organization to effectively coordinate and fight religious extremism and militancy. The fundamental challenges to fighting terrorism, especially in South Asia, are the existing differences and conflicts between various nations and the presence of serious mistrust. This is true, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India. Pa India and Pakistan are more focused on blaming each other rather than extending cooperation in fighting terrorism. For example, lately violence across the line of control in Kashmir has escalated. Pakistani establishment, media and publicly squarely place the blame on the Indian establishment and raw. In India the situation is just the mirror opposite, where the establishment, the media and public are convinced that it is Pakistan military and the infamous ISI who are the real culprits. I am convinced that the violence along the LOC does not help either country and is a total waste of human lives and materials. Incidentally, privately, senior leaders of both countries agree with me, but so far they have failed to arrest this escalation. In the spirit of this conference, my primary recommendation is to focus on the essential do's and don'ts in the form of a common denominator on which we all agree as the basis of a countered terrorism policy. However, as a starting point, it is also very important, as I had mentioned before that we agree, agree on a definition of what constitutes terrorism. I am listing a number of points in the form of common denominator to fight terrorism. I am confident these points are non-controversial and can be agreed by all nations. This will be a starting point. I don't know if we have that up. Not possible, anyway. The salient points of the common denominator on which we should hopefully all be able to agree. One, extremism, especially religious extremism, should be discouraged by every nation. I don't think there will be any debate or doubt in that. States with dominant religious minorities should discourage the majority from legislating extreme interpretation of religion to the detriment of their religious minority, especially under the umbrella, unfortunately, of democracy. Third, terrorism in any form, irrespective of its objective, should be forcefully condemned and banned. Other than the state, no group or entity within a nation should be allowed to declare a war on any other nation. Each nation should make sure that its territory is not used by any terrorist or terrorist group to attack a second or third nation. Each territorial region and sub-region needs to develop a counter-terrorist terrorist mechanism in terms of joining hands to assist one another in diffusing and defeating terrorism. Breaking away from the past, intelligence agencies need to play a positive role in def defeating trans-border terrorism. Resolving existing disputes, especially territorial disputes between nations through dialogue, will help in diffusing terrorism and should be pursued with vigor. So these are some of the points which I think constitute, oh, it's here? I don't know how they pulled it through, but anyway, I am out of sync with them now. <laughs> I think each nation threatened by terrorism should develop a national action plan or a national strategy to fight terrorism, announced national policy, national strategy. 
Pakistan is the first country in our region to set such an example. Though developing a national counter-terrorism plan is an important first step, however a state must develop the courage and conviction to implement such a plan. We have suffered from this. Though I have already made a reference to the contributory factors which have led to the growth of terrorism in Pakistan, unfortunately most nations of the Asia, especially South Asia, also suffer from these problems and need to address them. And factors which contribute to terrorism in our region are, first, high level of illiteracy or inadequate education. Insufficient number of schools and a faulty education system for the masses is a norm in many Asian countries. Although a very small percentage of students attend madrasas and similar religious institutions, but their role in projecting a distorted interpretation of religion is significant. Today, some nations are in the process of even rewriting their history, which in some cases will strike at the very heart of their secular credentials. Such misguided nationalism promotes bigotry and finally terrorism. Poor judicial practices and an inefficient police is a major cause of frustration among the masses who at times are forced to take the law in their own hand, which often drives them into the lap of extremist groups and parties. Lack of justice is a major issue. Poverty and an unfair distribution of wealth, especially where the gap between the rich and the poor is wide and unfair. Terrorist organizations have a field day in finding fresh recruits. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize the following points. If we fail to develop a universally acceptable, uh, acceptable perspective on what constitutes terrorism, our objective to defeat this common threat will be flawed. We must direct our energies to address factors which help the growth of terrorism in a country like poverty, illiteracy, flawed system of justice, social inequality and religious extremism. However, my primary conclusion is we must agree on a common denominator which will form the foundations of a joint strategy to fight terrorism. I thank you for your attention. I hope that was brief enough.